Hi, welcome to this episode of Home Health Revealed, where today we are going to be talking about medical review activity, quality improvement programs, and OASIS coding accuracy. We are going to be hearing from Marcy at Decision Health. She's going to be interviewing Ashley Benson. So Ashley is an experienced registered nurse who is skilled in QAPI, Policy and Procedure Development, OASIS, home health coding, nursing documentation, geriatric nursing, and organization skills. She is going to be talking through some of the things that you need to know to get ready for value-based purchasing in 2025. Marcy is also going to give you a $75 off coupon um, that is good for the Home Health Quality Outcomes and Documentation Conference that will be hosted in September. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Marcy? Today's format is going to be a Q&A style, so I'm going to go ahead and ask Ashley a couple questions, and she's going to offer her insights um, on those various topics for us. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the first question. One of the biggest trends we are seeing in home health right now is the increase in medical review activity. In some cases, agencies are getting hit with reviews from multiple Mm -hmm. contractors at one time. And of course, the interpretations um, have been interpreted in various ways. This can be confusing for agencies. So Ashley, what advice do you have for managers Mm -hmm. who are trying to navigate all of this? Um, Yes, Marcy, I agree. Medical review activity is running at a high right now. And unfortunately, I do not see an end to this increased scrutiny anytime soon. Um, So I highly recommend that agencies familiarize themselves with different types of medical review audits, including both the pre-claim and post-claim audits. So whether it's um, TPE, UPIC, CERTs, RACs, or even RCD, agencies need to understand the requirements for each ADR in order to respond accurately and timely. According to Palmetto, the top reason for medical review denials for 2023 was records requested were not submitted in the required time frame. So whenever agencies receive those ADRs, the biggest errors that they can make or the biggest error that they can make is to not respond in a timely manner or not to submit the ADR request at all. Um, So one key piece of advice that I do have regarding medical um, activity is that agencies need to start early and follow the checklist of items that are provided in the request. Also, when they're when they're gathering all the information on that checklist to submit, they need to pay special attention to the face-to-face encounter documentation and the certification and plan of care. These are the number two and number three top denial reasons according to both CGS and Palmetto. Um, and so with audits being the new normal, it is essential that agencies develop both processes for intake and perform internal audits audit of all the documentation. Um, They need to be looking at the referral information, orders, visit notes, face-to-face, really everything to make sure that all the requirements are met um, in order to mitigate those risks for potential denials. Thank you, Ashley. That was a lot of really useful information. Decision Health, too, recognizes the challenge that agencies have been facing with medical review audits, as well as the growing importance of compliance documentation to secure accurate payments. And that was one of the reasons we devoted the pre-conference for the Home Health Quality Outcomes and Documentation Conference to this very topic. Ashley's going to be speaking at this pre-conference on September 16th, and it's kind of a a really exciting format for the pre-conference where attendees will work together in person to review real patient records um, and to really understand the key pieces of information that are needed uh, to fulfill the documentation requirements. So we're really looking forward to that. With that, um, I think we're ready to move on to our next question. With quality measures determining payments as part of nationwide value-based purchasing to the increased surveyor focus on QAPI, it's inevitable that agencies are starting to invest training dollars in quality improvement efforts. So, Ashley, what are the key areas that agencies should focus on to ensure success with value-based purchasing and to avoid survey penalties. Yes, it is vital for agencies to understand the importance and impact that a QAPI program can have on their success. 
I am very passionate about Quapi. I do believe that it is a key um, element for, for successful agencies. And so when they're looking to develop a effective and compliant Quapi program, the first thing they need to do is review the regulatory guidance to understand required elements. Um, this is going to include, obviously, CMS, their state requirements, and then any accrediting bodies that they are um, responsible for. Next, agencies need to understand the impact for each indicator and quality measure. This is going to allow them to develop those policies and procedures um, that include specifics regarding their QAPI program. So they're going to be looking at their scope, their data, the activities, the, the performance improvement projects, and then the de delegation of responsibilities. When we're looking at home health value-based purchasing, star ratings, and survey, the program scope must include health outcomes, patient safety, and quality of quality of care. Measurable data must be also collected, trended, and analyzed to determine the effectiveness and safety of services, the quality of care provided, um, in order to identify any areas of improvement that are needed. Um, data should be collected from the OASIS, so that's going to be including all of those M items that do impact home health value-based purchasing, the STAR ratings, and PDGM payments. Data also should be collected looking at patient satisfaction surveys, um, claims-based data, so that's acute care hospitalizations and emergency department visits, and then any of those adverse events, um, infections, falls, complaints, um, all of that data should be collected, trended, and tracked over time in order to identify those areas of improvement and also those areas of excellence where an agency may be performing really well. Um, it can be challenging, and I understand this um, completely, and it can be challenging for agencies to develop, implement, and evaluate, and then also maintain a QAPI program that is going to be compliant, well-organized, and effective. However, again, as I said in the beginning, a successful QAPI program can minimize risk. It's going to enhance patient experience. It can improve agency outcomes. It's going to optimize that operational efficiency across the board. It's going to support the growth for those referrals and that, that growing census that every agency wants. It's also going to strengthen your staff cohesion, which is so important for patient satisfaction, um, team, team uh, unity, um, and culture, and then also to achieve clinical excellence. It all comes back to that QAPI program and, and implementing something that's going to be um, comprehensive and compliant over time. QAPI really does impact a lot of um, aspects of the business. And one of the things at the Home Health Quality Outcomes and Documentation Conference is that agencies will get an opportunity to get some useful tips for improving in some of those same areas that you mentioned and to really, you know, get some advice about how to establish and maintain um, an effective QAPI program. Attendees will even hear from an agency that used machine learning to reduce hospitalizations as one example. That brings us to our last question. OASIS and coding accuracy are key building blocks needed to receive correct home health payments, both PDGM and value-based purchasing bonuses. It's also key to minimize medical review risks and ensure the outcomes are reflecting patient improvement under your care. One of the challenges is that the rules and regulations keep changing. So how do agencies make sure that clinicians are up to date on all of this? Oh, that's a great question. Um, with their focus on patient care, and that's where we want their focus to be, right? It can be difficult to keep clinicians updated of the constantly changing OASIS and coding guidance. Um, however, keeping those clinicians informed is essential to an agency's success. Um, OASIS and coding not only is going to play a key role in determining your payments, but scoring and coding accuracy also leads to more individualized and effective treatment plans that is going to increase that patient safety reduce those adverse events, and then also improve the outcomes. So it is the responsibility of each agency administrator to ensure that their QA team, their clinical managers, their clinicians, and coders receive updated information, training, and support during these changes. And if you're in home health long enough, you know that um, changes is ever occurring. It's always something that we're going to have to deal with and finding a good way to communicate to that 
communicate that to your team is going to be essential. So one area that I think is worth focusing training on right now is going to be the accuracy of those OASIS GG items. These items capture various aspects of the patient's functionality, um, and they're going to factor into those home health value-based purchasing bonuses and penalties starting in 2025. So these items were just added just before OASIS E, and many clinicians, is what we found out, they're still not clear on how to answer or score some of those items. Um, and determining the distinctions between the rules for answering these items can, compared to those functional M items that have been on the OASIS. So I highly recommend that that is where they would focus on um, the, any kind of training right now is, is those GG items. Great. Yeah, that that's really helpful to have, you know, some direction and, and to be able to prioritize because sometimes it can, it can be difficult to know where to start. <laughs> Um, and based on a tip from Ashley and some of the other experts that we consulted with, Decision Health included a session about those same OASIS GG items at the Home Health Quality Outcomes and Documentation Conference. So it, this conference also has other sessions that, you know, really help clinicians, quality managers, clinical supervisors um, get up to speed on some of the CMS Q&As, guidance changes from the coding clinic, et cetera. So thank you very much, Ashley. That was my last question. I really hope that this podcast reinforces the need for agencies to invest in some of these quality efforts that will not only impact patient safety and care, but also um, financials. So once again, thanks, Ashley, for all of your thoughtful answers and your insight about all of this. We are excited to have you part of the Home Health Quality Outcomes and Documentation Conference in September. As a thank you for those listening, we are going to offer a $75 discount on top of our early bird discounted rate. So please visit the URL that's listed on the screen to learn more about the conference. And when registering, please use promo code QUALITY75. You can learn more about the conference at decisionhealth.com backslash QOD as in David. 2024. Again, decisionhealth.com backslash QOD2024. That wraps up our insightful discussion with Ashley on these key topics impacting home health agencies, including medical review audits, quality improvement initiatives, and OASIS coding accuracy. Her expertise sure has shed light on some strategies that mitigate risks, enhance patient outcomes, and optimize reimbursements, which you know at HealthRev Partners, we are all about. Our team is definitely gearing up for the change in those GG items, and we don't want to miss any opportunity to learn more from Ashley, from other industry experts like Decision Health. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time.